All right, let's talk about magnetic build plates. I'm going to start by talking about what they are, why you might want one. Then we'll move on to how you would install a magnetic build plate on your resin 3D printer. Then I will talk about some of the cons to having a magnetic build plate. And if you stay with me till the end, I'll go ahead and tell you all the tips and tricks I've learned over the years using magnetic build plates to help you have the best success you can when you're using them on your resin 3D printer. With that, guys, let's get going. So you might be wondering, what is a magnetic build plate? Well, a magnetic build plate is simply a product that you can buy to turn your normal build plate into a build plate that has a magnetic attachment that allows you to remove your 3D print very quickly. It's as simple as snapping it on. Once your print finishes, snapping it off. So why might you want to add one of these to your 3D printer? A few reasons, actually. The, the first reason is sometimes these are bulky, and it can be hard to position them in such a way where it's easy to get your 3D print off because of the angle. A magnetic build plate, however, can simply be removed. The regular build plate can be left on your 3D printer, and you can set these flat in order to remove your 3D print. The second benefit to installing a magnetic build plate is when you remove a build plate from your resin printer, they're typically covered in liquid resin and they will freely drip on every surface you don't want them to, including your clothes, your shoes, um, and they come out with a lot of resin on them. So in a world where you have a magnetic build plate, the process is much simpler. You simply un snap your magnetic build plate, set it down on your paper towel. It sets flat, there's not all the excess resin dripping all over every surface you have, and then it's easy to clean up from here or to remove your print. When removing a 3D print, sometimes they can be stuck to your build plate and it's very difficult to remove them. With a magnetic build plate, instead of having to use a scraper to just get under your raft and pop it off, you can actually bend these as they're quite flexible. And that bend is usually enough just to pop up your 3D print without needing to scrape it much or um, to use much force at all to get your print off. Just be careful when you do that, guys. Sometimes they like to go flying, and the only thing worse than struggling to get one off a build plate is cracking one because it hit the floor. Another big positive having a magnetic build plate is when you want to keep your printer going as much as possible. Um, let's pretend that this printer finished printing and we want to take it off, clean it, and get another print going. Typically, that process if you have to remove your build plate, remove the print, it takes a good few minutes at best. At most, it's a 15-minute process. With magnetic build plates, one of the big positives of it is you can buy a second build plate for very cheap. And the process to keep a printer going can be done in as little as 15 seconds. So hear me out. Print's finished. We remove the build plate, set it down. That can be dealt with later. Go ahead and install a new build plate here. And it's as quick as clicking print. And your printer is going again. Put your top on. Now that your printer is going, you can take all the time you need to go ahead and clean up your finished 3D print. So it's a big time saver to have one of these little dudes on your 3D printers. Final benefit I've got for you for having a magnetic build plate comes to cleaning up your 3D print. So a lot of people I watch like to take their wash station and simply dip their entire build plate into their wash station. Let the machine run and then everything is clean and free of resin. Two problems with that method. One, you end up wasting a lot of resin in your wash because this has a ton of resin on it. Even if you let it drip for a while, it still has a lot of resin. And two, your isopropyl alcohol can only dissolve so much resin uh, before it becomes saturated and needs to be replaced. So by being able to remove a magnetic build plate, you only have to wash this small surface and your print when you stick it into your wash if you choose to wash the print before you remove it from your build plate. I typically remove my print 
before I put it in the wash regardless. So it's not really a win for me, but for a lot of people that want to have very little contact with 3D resin, this is a big win. All right. So now that we've talked about what a magnetic build plate is and why you want one, let's talk about how you would go about installing one on your 3D printer. So first you would want to take your build plate off of your machine. This one already has a magnetic build plate on it, um, but the concept will be the same and I'll show you on this one uh, for demonstration purposes. So this one has a magnet already on it. When you buy a magnetic build plate, it will come with two things. It will come with a magnet, and it will come with a metal build plate. These two. In order to apply one of these to your 3D printer, it's as simple as removing the backing from the magnetic or from the magnet, sticking it onto your build plate, applying firm even pressure, and then snapping on the magnetic build plate. It takes roughly 30 seconds. Um, the one caveat is you need to have a very clean build plate before you do this. Um, if you want to know a good way to clean your build plate, I've got a great video on my channel about that, so check that out. Otherwise, um, let's move on. All right, the final step, guys, to install one of these on your printer is once you install a magnetic build plate, you cannot begin printing right away. The reason for that is once you've installed a magnet and a build plate on to your original build plate, um, it becomes thicker. And so you're going to need to go through the process of zeroing your printer again. And so what that means is loosening these four screws, um, homing your printer so that it lays flat against your, your screen, and then go ahead and retighten those. And that will allow you to reset it uh, to print with this on. If you're not sure how to do that, I've also got a video on my channel showing you how to do just that. Um, so go check that out. All right, guys. So last thing I want to go over with you is these build plates sound great, and they are. I'm going to have one on every printer I own. Um, However, there is one con that I have run into in my years of printing with these, and it didn't happen until recently. These build plates, they're, they're very secure with the magnet. In fact, I have just trying to slide these around on here, cut my finger, so be careful with that. However, I've recently bought a very large format resin 3D printer, as you can see here. This is the build plate for the Halot Mage. And I had someone commission me to print a very large 100% infill object for them. It took up a majority of the build plate. It was a multi, multi hour print. And because it was so large, it actually generated enough force to lift the build plate slightly during the printing process. And it didn't detach completely. Um, what it did was shift ever so slightly between layers until when I returned, the magnetic build plate was sticking off to the side like this. So, yes, you could add vent holes to your 3D print to reduce the vacuum, However, this was a specific order that needed to be 100% infill, so I wasn't able to add holes into the 3D print to release the vacuum from the build plate. So, what that means is if you're going to be printing really large, really solid objects on a really big build plate, then you may want to have an additional build plate that does not have a magnetic build plate on it. Um, for me, I just told the client I wasn't going to be able to print it on my printer. It wasn't a big deal. Um, they had it printed with an FDM printer instead. And I'm working on solutions to overcome this problem. But just so you know, that is the one problem I've had with the magnetic build plate. None of my other printers have had that issue. So I still highly recommend them. And I still will have them on all my 3D printers because that was such a unique case um, to run into that problem. Most people aren't printing 
1500 milliliter worth of volume 3D prints on the resin printer. So it's probably not an issue most people will run into. All right, as promised, I'll go ahead and give you all my pro tips for using these I've learned over the years. Um, first tip I've got for you is when you buy a magnetic build plate, your 3D prints tend to not want to stick initially to a perfectly smooth piece of steel. So you might get one of these, stick it on your printer, and think, oh my goodness, these don't work. That is typically not the case. Um, the best method to deal with this, what I've done to all my build plates, go ahead and get some sandpaper and go ahead and rough up the surface a little bit. When you first get one of these, they come very smooth from the factory. And a lot of times your prints don't want to stick to it initially. After you've used it a while, it, goes, it, it automatically roughs itself up. However, you can do that day one. Get some anywhere between 200 to 400 grit sandpaper and just very lightly uh, rough up the surface. All it needs is a little bit and you shouldn't have any problems with your prints adhering to the magnetic build plate. In fact, sometimes I think they're harder, they adhere better to a roughed up surface of one of these build plates than they do the stock build plates of my printers. Second tip I've got for you guys, which we mentioned earlier, always buy two magnetic build plates for your printers. Once you finish a print, you can set it to the side, slap on a second magnetic build plate, click print, and you're good to go again. Under 15 seconds, you've turned over your printer. Third tip I've got for you guys, most of the time when you get these magnetic build plates, they come with a tab on one side. You can see here that tab needs to face towards you when you install it on the 3D printer. That makes removing the magnetic build plate easy because you can just use that tab to pry it down. If you forget and you put it facing towards the back of the printer, um, it can be difficult to remove these magnetic build plates after your print finishes. All right, with that, guys, hopefully you've learned all you need to know about magnetic build plates. Hopefully you can go out and get yourself one for your resin 3D printers because I think they really are a major upgrade. Um, I will say, if you're just getting into resin 3D printing, go ahead and learn your printer really well first before you start uh, making modifications or upgrades. Give yourself a chance to get used to using a stock format printer before you go ahead and make changes. The reason I say this is, when you first start, you tend to get a lot of failed prints, and that's because there's a steep learning curve. You've got to learn how to set your cure times. You've got to learn how to keep your resin mixed. You've got to learn so many things about software and supports, and the less things you can change initially um, and just focus on getting reliably successful 3D prints, um, I think that's going to serve you best. However, this, once you are comfortable with your 3D printer, I think should be your first upgrade. I'll go ahead and throw a link to a few different printer models, magnetic build plates in the description. Feel free to check those out. Um, most of the time, these are pretty cheap. You can get them for around $20. Um, I paid closer to $50 for the magnetic build plate for my mage, um, just because it's so large. And it was right when it first came out, so there wasn't many of these on the market. In fact, there was only one website that I could find it. Typically, I like to buy everything I buy off Amazon, um, but this actually had to buy from a third-party uh, website um, just because it was so new to the market. However, most printers out there should have one of these available as long as it's not a brand-new printer. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Um, I'm really having fun making this content. I'm really trying to grow this channel. I've got some great other tutorials on there. So if you're looking to get into 3D printing, electroplating, workshop stuff, go check my channel out. I think you'll find a lot of stuff you enjoy. As always, guys, build some cool stuff. I'll see you on the next one.